So in a previous video, we did um, K nearest neighbor identification or classification of um, or iris flower data set. So now we'll look at decision tree classification. Um, so we already talked about how um, or iris flowers we would naively and traditionally classify by hand by just putting hard cutoffs on individual variables. And we would be able to do that maybe, maybe once or two levels deep, um, but that would be about it, right? Um, and we would probably um, mainly look at things like those correlation plots to make the decisions where we put those, um, those cutoffs. Now, what decision trees do is um, automate this. So uh, there's a couple of ways in which we can do that. Um, but the first thing we have to do is determine what is our best um, uh, our best tree. And that best um, decision will be based on a criterion to maximize information entropy, where again, information entropy is P log P, now summed over all values for X. Or we can maximize the Gini index, um, which again might be familiar from um, the final project where uh, there's that makes an appearance as well. So the Gini index essentially um, gives you the largest separation um, between two choices. So the Gini index is the default in scikit-learn's decision tree implementation and it is a good job. Um, since we've talked about entropy before, um, I'm actually going to use uh, entropy in the following. So how do we apply this to the classification problem of our iris flowers. Um, so the first thing we'll have to do, we'll have to do is install this graph vis visualization program so we can show the decision graphs that will make things a lot clearer. Um, in my case, this is probably already installed, um, but in your case, the, this will actually um, load a number of uh, packages and it may take 10 seconds or so before it has, uh, has completed. So then I'll, I'll load the iris data set and I'll start um, and I'll create a decision tree classifier with that criterion, the best decision criterion um, based on information entropy. And then I'll train this against um, iris um, X input features and iris Y um, output targets for the training data set. So the next block here is, is merely intended to print out um, this graph using this graph this package. Uh, and so it will actually store it as a PDF file, but of course we don't care about PDF files since we're in the cloud. So, <coughs> so we prefer um, to actually see that um, on the screen. And so that's exactly what this does here. So it, it shows that um, our first decision will be based on the pedal length, which is a unit in units of centimeters. And so if the pedal length is less or equal than 2.45, then we'll go to the left here, otherwise we go to the right. So for true, so we started off here with 46 um, uh, in, in the class of Setosa, 46 in the class of Versicolor, and 48 in the third class, which is Virginica. And because that's in the majority, at this level, we would have the best the um, uh, best classification if we just said everything is Virginica. That would give us the most right answers. Um, we have about 140 points and our entropy is given by this value. <coughs> so um, if, uh, if, if we make this separation, then now we have 46, all of those 46, which are classified as Setosa. Um, and since they're all in this class Setosa, there's no more um, additional separation that we need to do. If this pedal length is greater than 2.45 centimeters, then we're on this right side here. So we have to make another decision because now we have 0, 46, 48. So we can still do better than this. There's 94 samples in here. So the next decision that we can, uh, the next um, criterion we impose is uh, a criterion on the, on the pedal width. So if the pedal width is less than 1.75, then we go here to the, to the left. If it is greater than 1.75, we go to the right. Um, let's start at the right now. Uh, all of the 43 training um, entries that, uh, that ended up on the right here are all in the Virginica class. So since this is all Virginica, we don't need to uh, continue our, um, our selection. Um, 
on the right here, uh, on the left here, we have 51 samples, and five of those are in the class Virginica, um, but 46 are in the class Versicolor. Notice that in our naive approach, which was based on pedal length and pedal width, this is where we would have stopped, right? Um, this is where we would have said, okay, everything here is Versicolor. So we can do better than this. Um, we can keep separating this now. Uh, we can uh, um, ask, is the pedal length less than 4.95? If it is, is the pedal width less than 1.65? Um, if it is, uh, then it is Versicolor. If it, the pedal width is greater than 1.65, let's go to this side and it's Virginica. If the pedal length is greater than 4.95, then what's the pedal width compared to 1.55? Then we have Virginica. We can look at, finally, the sepal length. If that is less than 6.95, then we have Versicolor. Otherwise, we have Virginica. So you can see that ultimately, at the end of each of those branches, in each leaf at the end of the tree, we have only um, samples of a single class. So here we have one sample of the class Virginica. Here we have two samples of Versicolor. As soon as there's more samples, uh, more than one class represented in the samples that we have, we split it up with another criterion. Okay, so this is now our decision tree and we would apply this. So this is based on training data. So can we now apply this to um, or test data. So we'll do the same thing. We'll look at the difference between the test data input um, features and what their prediction is and the actual values for the target. As you can see, again, um, we have one difference. All the others um, are, are, uh, are correct. So we have a 90% um, accuracy. And of course, our um, decision tree based on the training data is going to be 100% accurate because we went all the way down until we only had um, had samples left in one class. So by definition, we would always have 100% accuracy in our um, in our training data set. Um, we can actually plot um, what this does. Um, so don't pay too much attention to this code here. It's it's not necessarily doing um, exactly the same as the decision tree up there, um, but uh, in particular because it's using the Gini index and not entropy. But one of the things you'll see here is that um, you end up with these little regions that are um, cut out of, of particular, coordin um, particular coordination, um, correlation plots, um, which, which is not, which makes us think that this is actually overfitting, right? Um, there happens to be maybe one point that falls there, um, but that's not necessarily what we're interested in. So to make this more accurate, let me um, put this into criterion is entropy. Um, then at least it should be um, relatively similar to what we got up here. Um, so you'll see again, we have different regions um, which are essentially determined by uh, the the, the the statistical fluctuations in our um, in our training data. So we want to avoid that overfitting. Um, so how can we do that? Uh, instead of going all the way down to the lowest leaves in the tree until there's only single samples left, what we can do is go down until there's a certain number um, of samples left. So the lowest splits are actually not very indicative of real predictive power. They're just fitting to the statistical noise in the data. So um, what we do is we uh, use this variable min samples split um, so that uh, we, can, we can reduce that noise in the bottom of our tree. So we'll introduce here min sample split is equal to 10 um, and we'll fit um, the X and the Y training values. Uh, we can draw our decision tree. So as you can see, um, a lot of the leaves down here are gone. Um, and as soon as there's less than 10 samples left, in this case six, even though they're in different classes, we'll just assume that everything here was in the majority class, or in this case, Virginica. So that is what the um, min sample split um, parameter does. And of course we can change the min sample split anywhere from two um, to the maximum number of data points in our, on, in our sample. 
Um, and as you can see, we start at min sample split equal to two, which is essentially the smallest value it can be. That's when we split when there's two samples left. Um, so that's, uh, that's the default value. That's when we go all the way down until all leaves are just as at, at, uh, at least, uh, or less, uh, are all in the same class, um, even if it means that there's only a single sample in that, um, in that node. So there, of course, we have 100% um, uh, um, predictive uh, or 100% um, accuracy score for um, or, uh, or training data set. Uh, that's where we had our 90% accuracy score for the test data set. As you can see, if we increase min sample split, we do worse on our um, training data set but we don't necessarily do a whole lot worse on the test data set. It's a little bit difficult to, to see here um, because we had um, a fairly large, uh, a fairly small number of um, entries in our, in our test data set. Um, only one when we really start to cut down into our tree here, um, this is where essentially we don't even make the first cut here. That's our number 94 here. Um, so as soon as we go over 94, then at this point we say, well, all of this is going to be Virginica. Uh, we'd never even identify any of the versicolor. Um, so of course, then everything is going to go down um, in, in accuracy. But in general, if you have a larger data set, this would be a good time to look at where the, the test data set will have a, an, a relatively good um, um, error rate or accuracy rate um, and the training data set uh, doesn't actually matter all that much in this case. So keep in mind for both of those classification algorithms, again, there are hyperparameters that we need to think about. And in the case of, uh, um, of uh, K nearest neighbor, that is our value of K. Um, in the case of uh, our um, decision trees, that is our min sample split um, value. So based on our training and our test data separation, we can try to assess whether our hyperparameters have led to some kind of overfitting or whether we're actually um, really predicting something.